Hi everybody, it's Lisa Marie here, hanging out today with Troy, and we're gonna be talking a bunch of real estate. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. Yeah. It's such a nice day and a nice home, and Thank you. it's been a treat to visit with you and see all the, the pretty things in the house. So. We've been talking a lot about school. We've both got children, and we've been talking about the freeze in Houston, the deep freeze we just had. Absolutely. Property management, and what a nightmare. We had four houses that we had to repair plus our own house. Yeah. And we had a guy fall through the ceiling in the garage down in Channel View. Were you telling me that? Yeah, luckily he landed sideways and didn't fall all the way through, but we got a mama moving in from Louisiana today. Well, good. Yeah. Well, so, you met, you got it done. It's yeah, finished. So yeah. everybody's back online. I have one that we're still waiting on, but other than that, everybody's back online too, but it's it's been stressful for people. It's been hard finding plumbers, it's been hard finding sheetrock guys, it's because everybody all at once yeah, it's kind of like Harvey when Houston had our tornadoes and all the hurricane stuff. A lot of people all at once needed a whole lot of people all at once, and so it's that makes it be a long line of waiting to get oh, things yes. repaired. And that's what we kind of told people is that you know it's going to take a while. We got a, we got plumbers going right away because I use multiple vendors, but I would call plumbers and everybody didn't have the problem. Then was materials. So okay, we we have uh, we have people ready to go, but we don't have the materials yet. Yeah, so I knew one was empty. yeah. I knew one uh, one of our vendors had someone drive all the way to Alabama to pick up stuff and come oh, and bring good. it back. So good. yeah. So tell everybody what you do. So we do uh, residential rental property management. So I'm a licensed realtor. Um, I have a CPA license that I also carry from my previous career. This is kind of like my third career right now. Um, I'm in that transition. And what we do is even though I have a real estate license, if people ask me, do you want to buy or sell, help me buy or sell a home, I do not do that. I focus um, solely on residential rental property listing and management. That means I have a license. I can put your home on for, I focus on rentals. I can get your home up there on, on the MLS, on HAR, on any of those things, all these other things. We use like Zillow. I can photograph. That's why I've had such a good time here because I enjoy you photography, like photography, amateur stuff, not to this degree. But um, so basically we get you a tenant, we screen them, and that's very important right now. And we, we make sure we're, we're compliant with fair housing and we're doing everything we're supposed to do. Right. Uh, we bring them in there, and, and what success looks like is, you know, we're attentive to what they need, but, but at the same time, if we have to push back and someone doesn't like the fact that the, a board is broken in the backyard, right. I need that fixed now, that's not going to happen, that's not what we do. So we have those conversations so our owners don't have to, and so we're always trying to kind of keep that relationship going to where if we have good tenants, we want to keep them happy within reason, and we want to re-sign them is what we want to have happen. Now for me financially, it's better if I don't re-sign them because then I'm putting the flag up again and I sure. get that listing fee. Sure. But the problem with that is, is if you're doing that constantly, you're not going to be in the business very long. You know that. I mean, if you think about it, you know, if you're going to list, it's normally it's one month's rent to list a home. And let's just say that's a thousand dollars and you're making 12,000 a year. That's immediately a thousand dollars gone, even in the best case. Yep. And then after that, you're probably going to wait about, you know, 30 days, depending on how well they're marketing in and, and the economy. So you've already lost, you know, $2,000 out of the 12000 without any repairs or anything going. So I really try to hit home on the fact that you got to get the right tenants in there. It's not 100% when you screen, but it's really about making the money for your clients. Right. And the more clients you get, that's what that, that's what's success for me is. So that's kind of our philosophy. We're really, you know, I visit every property that we manage right now. Um, you know, we do everything to where we want to be very attentive and that's why we're not doing any other kind of real estate except working with that. And I love that. And, you know, I was a licensed realtor in like 1992 and on 1960 and, you know, daddy came and bought 70 houses in Houston in 91 mm -hmm. and then I let that go. And then clients asked me to please get it back. So I'm now a licensed right. realtor and, but I've been an investor mm -hmm. in real estate for all 30 years of my marriage. Right. And, you know, my, my goal um, this next probably 24 months is to start buying in Galveston. Okay. I want to buy old homes mm -hmm. and restore them and then rent them out for Airbnb and create so, a travel, because you know I've got the vacations and the travel vacation, travel agency, create a vacation for people who are normally having me book them for Mexico. Mm -hmm. Galveston is not Mexico. Please don't make the mistake of me <laughs> thinking that it's I It's Gulf of it. Mexico. It's, it's the Gulf of Mexico. It's not ideal for me in terms of what I want to see when I think about going on a beach vacation. Mm -hmm. But a lot of families are renting RVs. Mm -hmm. A lot of families are liking Airbnbs. And I told my B that I thought, you know, if we're going to do that, why buy another 322 in 
some other part of Houston. Why not? Why not just do one in Galveston or two or three or four or whatever, and really spend a lot of. T- of course, I've also been watching a lot of that Discovery Plus channel. The the couple in Galveston. Have you watched? Them? I haven't the ones that watched that, but I've been watching a lot of that because you know we ran out of stuff to watch yeah. on Netflix because of all this pandemic, and so I have been watching them restore floors and watching them do that. And when I was at Savannah College of Art and Design, mm-hmm. I was doing a lot of historic preservation classes. And I've got the bug. I think that what I want right. to do is that because that Airbnb be so fun. Um, I don't know if it's something that you'd be interested in. Yeah, I mean, well, we don't do a lot of Airbnb right now, but it's something we'll probably transition into. Uh, but I love your idea because, you know, a lot of this with the, the you know, the investor communities talking, the ones that are making money on Airbnb right now, are people that have stuff in Galveston because people didn't want to get on an airplane. They wanted some place that they, and you have, what, 8 million people in the metropolis here. They want to go somewhere where they can go and, and, and do something in a car. And I knew another investor, they were doing the same thing up around New Jersey. So, you know, people were going to these houses, you know, on the Jersey shore mm-hmm. for those same reasons. And then the thing about Galveston's great is it's, you know, I, I grew up in League City, so I'd go down there all the time. For sure, yeah. yeah. My dad worked down there when we first came down here to Texas when they did. I was born here, but they had, um, you know, they have all this historical stuff, which is really cool. And there's actually a show on one of those things, one of those builder networks. I can't remember which one, where the couple is from Galveston. I'm going to have to find it. And they it. go in there, and I watched the first episode of it the other day. I had to go back, because I saw them on a real estate investor thing. They talked about so-and-so from the show. Right. And it's real neat, like they're... I think it's her mom has a little extra storage plate space, so they'll pick stuff up. They had like a light, you know, those old signs you'd see down there, you know, when I was a kid, before they were metal, it's no swimming near the rocks, yeah, and you know, those rock yeah, things. Yeah. She had one of those in the garage, and they like repurposed it and oh, made a table out of cool. it. Cool. But so if you know Galveston, which isn't, it's not very big, but you know, you can kind of, you're like, oh, I know where that is, but they're right. doing the same thing, and I think that's really a good idea, because most people, they're looking at those condos, hey, we'll throw up a condo, and then you got all that, it's a piece of concrete. But those houses, you know, if you can get through the historical parts of it and the restoration piece, I mean, they're sitting there. They're very affordable. And to your point, there's a lot of people that would just like to be in the city, too, because it's kind of got that feel. I mean, it's not New Orleans or Savannah, obviously, but you do have a little bit of that. Just a little bit. More so than you do in Houston, where everything's... Well, and there's specific little shops. And, you know, and and I think, too, like, if you're... I don't want to be like the, the host whatever it's called when you do your Airbnb, not mm-hmm. Airbnb, when you do your bed and breakfast, you've got the person that's there with you. Because yeah. um, we've done that. I did a, a luxury marketing real estate class in Austin and we stayed near, mm-hmm. we didn't stay in the hotel they were having the actual uh, class certification in. Right. We stayed in an Airbnb and it was really quaint and wonderful and lovely and old. And um, and it was, it, was, it was really neat, but I don't want to have that relationship with the property. But... I have been in Palisade Palms in those condos for three years at a stretch because mm-hmm. when the babies and the client base were in that middle section yeah. where I needed to photograph them at sunset, we just forfeited a vacation for three years, signed a lease, and went to Palisade Palms. Oh, okay. So we were hop on a sky in the skyscraper, you know, and we right. loved it. And Brian keeps saying, oh, we should just sell everything and move to Galveston and go to the sky, 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 skyscraper. Yeah. And I'm like, yes, but we don't have a garden we don't have, I don't have, I don't have what I want, right? And it's right. hard to kind of put three cats in a condo. <laughs> it just doesn't work, no. right? It just doesn't feel like it. And I don't want grandchildren coming to a condo yeah. for Christmas. I right. mean, I want this house to be where they come home to, where they've always known and all of that. But but I'm thinking, like, give them, like, a little roadmap, almost like you do when you open up and you're at Disney. And sure. here's all the different villages and all, or even at Sandals and Beaches, right, yeah. resorts, and say, this is a wonderful place to eat. You know, for lunch, there's a mosquito mm-hmm. grill. There's a gorgeous bakery beside it that has the best lemon pound cake you'll ever eat. Oh yeah, and kind of give them a guide map for what they can enjoy in Galveston. So even if they're not like really close, or depending on where we can find property, they've got like a little sort of a guide as to what they can find and enjoy there. And now with the pier, yeah, I mean it's really cool. You've got the Schlitterbahn. They've got everything that they need right to there. have a good time and have fun vacation without having to get on a plane and the cool part about that's the the widest point the island's only three miles so you know you can still get around to everywhere and then a lot of those houses are actually conducive to that because they don't have to be a really big house you know they can be in a neighborhood like what do they call it the silk stalking district down there which is kind of neat in the old post office street where 
You know, I mean, there's a lot of really neat stuff that you could even just go see for free down there. Yeah. You know, if you know what it is. Right. Where, you know, here in Houston, except for the Heights, we kind of just bulldozed everything. I know, so I know. Yeah, I think it would be a really interesting trip. And I think a lot of people ignore that. They want everything just on the beach. And the beach is one dimensional. It's great. you got a beach there. It is a beach, whatever it is. But then if you're staying up front and you're not seeing all of those other things, then you're kind of missing out. So I think it's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. I think it would be really cool. I talked to an electrician in Missouri City two weeks ago and he and his wife have gone down there and they bought they bought one okay and they've restored it and fixed it up and it's getting ready to need to be on the market for lease and he was working on that and so hopefully you can get that booked out but you know obviously it's gonna be seasonal but the nice thing too is that if you wanted to just get away oh yeah you've got your own little spot to go get away to just for a little family vacation on your own Mm -hmm. and it's just a second house to have Oh, I it's think it's not, a great idea. I'd love to have one myself, you know. Well, maybe and it's we affordable. Should talk about it. We should talk about it. You know, it's neat. And then don't forget, you have a lot of people that go. We've had family members that have gone to UTMB down there, and they're trying to find places to live, too. Exactly. And so, and then the other big market down there where I've seen the ones that have come on the market are um, former offshore companies, because you realize we're not doing a lot of offshore right now. So, you know, they used to put those guys in those houses, and they'd go to Shoals and fly them out on the helicopters. So... You know, those are, you know, out there too. But no, I think it's a great deal. There I, are also a lot of people, I think, that were in the, the towers that were yeah. employed mm-hmm. by them. And, then you know, they were out on the rigs and stuff. And they were just being a little one-bedroom condo. Yep. And everything's turnkey. The thing that I didn't like about the condo is that it's not like a resort. It doesn't have to. Oh, yeah. And so you really are, when you get down there, having to do what you do. You have to Everybody go to the grocery store. Yep. you got to clean your... You, it's not like a turnkey thing. It's you're really having to work. Where I grew up going to the lake in North Carolina, and right. they would get to the lake house, and the boat wouldn't crank, and the refrigerator would have to be, you know, everything had to be restocked. And it was like oh, a yeah. day to just get the house and all the equipment ready to be able to have a vacation. And then when you left, you had to clean. But my parents had a lake house oh in Kentucky God, for years. Yes. It was the same thing. They enjoyed it, loved it, and they got to save money. They loved to cook. That was great. But then the cleaning day came around, and then it's like... You know, it all depends on what you what you want to do. A lot of those guys, though, down there, and they, they, I was surprised all those energy companies were actually buying those little houses, too, not just the condos. So, you know, that's another thing to watch as those come on the market because of what's going on down there. I think mm-hmm. there'll be some availability, but there's cool another, idea. There's another guy that came to see me um, earlier this week, and he's got a ranch, and he's going to put tiny homes on them. Oh, okay. And he's actually asked me to decorate one for he, I get to have my own. Oh, wow. And get to have the, the Antia house for his ranch. I'm going to do all kinds of wild this stuff. <laughs> you have, already have the ideas I do. It'll percolating, be right? and furs and crystal chandeliers, yeah. and it'll be just like my house. But that's another thing. Maybe buying some land and setting up some smaller homes mm-hmm. and really not, not to capitalize on how much you can get off of the land from the in, investor perspective, mm-hmm. But that's really popular, too, especially oh, yeah. with this young set. They're digging these tiny homes. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's a it's a change in the mindset, but it's also, you know, if you kind of go with, that's a fun part about real estate. I mean, things go, you know, different ways. And, you know, I was telling you earlier, you know, one of the companies that we're now working with is here in Houston. They're doing some, um, I'm, we're just doing the maintenance part for them, but it's a company called PadSplit. And if you go to PadSplit.com, they're kind of working on communal living. So you can... You know, they're screened. They have a place to live very clean, very nice. And, you know, it's in certain areas right now. They're in Pasadena. But it's just, you know, all these options that you get from little houses to vacations to Airbnbs. That's all about, you know, being the investor. And, you know, I that's how I grew my business was I'd go to these investor events and I'd sit there and listen. And, you know, there, there's different ones. I mean, you have some that are great. You know, we do we do a lot of work with a company called Strata Ventures, a company called Wealth Club, really good education folks. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also you have the ones that come in from out of town and say, hey, you know, whoever gets to the back of the room first gets the deal for, you know, race me to the back and act now and that kind of stuff, too. And I've been to all of them, right. you know, so there's some that are legitimate. There's some that are like that. But what I've noticed is there is an interest in doing it. Does everybody always get to where they're actually doing it? Maybe not always. Right. but. You know, for what you do, and you've seen it, you've done it, so you know the the aspects of it. Yet it's still evolving for you. You're still thinking about things that you know you yeah, can do. Yeah, it's always it. it's funny to me. Two things. They made me think about the Rich Club because that's where Daddy was in whenever we I was were. in that too. Rich Club was like he was like a faithful member of the Rich Club, yep. like way back in the day when we first came to Houston, and and a lot of people that were in that group at the time um, were our contacts. You mm-hmm. know, for making making exactly. all of this happen for the Murray Family Limited Partnership of Texas. What's interesting is that it's 
it is always evolving. And like you think about real estate and you think about it in different pods, I kind of do. I've got friends that are realtors. Mm-hmm. I call myself the reluctant realtor. I told yeah, you that I know you the told other me that, day. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I don't really, I will do it if I need to do it. Mm-hmm. I can do it. I know it, right? But I really don't enjoy right. it. This is what I enjoy. I enjoy yeah. the channel. I enjoy the gardening. I enjoy sharing with the children when they come see me for photos. Uh, you know, how to plant things, how to create things, how to cook things. I really enjoy helping them plan. And you're going to have to show me the garden before I forget. I so will on be, the way I out, will. It's not what it was. You have to see it. May. Everyone's coming in May. Because oh, okay. it's, yeah, this weekend I'm getting a truck full of compost, a truck full of the regular good dirt uh, and mulch. And then I'm getting another flat, huge flat of Tennessee stone oh, and okay. another huge flat of my flagstone from Tennessee. So I'm seeing a mulch. Another shout out to my <laughs> wonderful family at Sienna Mulch. Um, they provide all of that and I've got a lot of work to do to put it back because we lost a lot of stuff. From right. Trees. Dragon fruit, citrus. I did see little leaves on the blueberries. I was videotaping that for the little Insta shorts for the channel. Right. Um, and the tulips have popped, well, but good. last weekend, no weekend before last, I put 52 tomato plants in. And then last weekend we put in all the blackberries and raspberries and all the citrus, new citrus right. trees and a bunch of dahlias. And oh, then okay. zinnia. So the whole back side of the garden will be a wall of flowers taller than me. And that's when you want to come, come back and see, and it. see that. Absolutely. And I actually have another family that um, they've been with me a long time. They have a piglet. Oh, okay. And so I've been watching all these, you know, competitors. They're not really competitors. Yep. They're really more like mentors sure. on YouTube. And of course, Martha Stewart is not my competitor. She is, she is Martha Stewart. Right. Right. I love Martha so much. Like, I mean, I just want to be her so badly. I just yeah. love her so, so much. So that, that was an influence, right? Oh, she yeah. She was kind She's of a like pioneer. A major yeah. influencer for me. Um, but I was like, what am I going to do for my trailer? And so I've got this piglet, mm-hmm. and I'm going to put it in a tutu, and I've got a big evening gown full of roses, and everyone knows I photograph oh, the babies wow. and the pregnant women yep. and the roses. And the roses. I'm going to climb into my John Deere tractor with my little piglet and a rhinestone oh, collar, cool. and we're working on all the details of getting that trailer set. So awesome. the trailer, which is like probably the first thing you should do for your YouTube channel, yeah. it's taken me a full year to get it processed what that's supposed to look like. Well, you want to get it right. But I want it to be living the sweet life, right? And right. that's what it feels like. But I want the garden to be just lush and beautiful and I needed a piglet. I didn't know I needed a piglet. And everybody that I've told that to, they're like, oh my God, Elisa Murray, that is the most perfect. Oh, pin- yes. It's like the perfect thing to like, if you were going to try to pinpoint that, maybe a martini. Put a martini in yep. one hand and a piglet tucked under the other, followed by a couple of cats. With the John Deere. Yeah. And yeah. I saw the cats when I came in. I'll tell you, I have an 11 year old daughter. And if she saw that, I, I know what she'd say. She'd go, oh, oh, she always does that. When you see something she likes like that, I want to hug it. I want one. So that's, yeah. Sasha the kids and Angie are it. just delightful. They keep all the snakes out of the garden. I yeah. can put my hand directly into fully covered c- cucumber beds, whatever it is, not even have to worry right. because they walk through the garden like oh, yeah. little tigers and kill anything that's not supposed they to know. be with them. They know, which I just love. Some of the clients are a little bit afraid of the cats. Right. They have dogs. I'm like, we have we had dogs, but dogs will tear up the ding-dang yeah. beds and jump on the clients and scratch them and bite them, and they get bitten by snakes. Yes, and they the do. girls bring the snakes dead as presents. The and cats, yes, they yes. will. They'll come running across. My wife had one that used to see her car come up and it'd come running across the street with stuff and she'd run in the house and shut the door when she lived with her mom because she never know what was bringing <laughs> her. She, didn't know what she had one get. that brought a duck home once before oh, we were dating. No. An entire duck. Oh, And then no. we had one that brought a, the one that ended up in my house when we first got married, you know, it brought home a squirrel once and ate the legs off of it. And then someone tried to take its squirrel away. He got really mad. So yeah, yeah they're, they're really they, good about You don't realize gifts. it, but yes. You know. are, and that's, that for them, that's a big deal. Like yeah. it's, it's, if you're their person, they're really they're, showing that's a gift. They're very protective. Yeah. And mm-hmm. they kind of mark you and things. I grew up with dogs. I wasn't a cat person until we got married and. Yeah, I mean, I, dogs are great, too. I mean, my parents, they love dogs. I mean, but I'm still, I like the convenience of the cat, too. And it oh, just smells clean. You know, that's one of the things yeah, I like about it. You can leave for two or three days. Exactly. They don't gobble their food. Mm-mm. You know, and William's not even here today. And all of y'all are normally used to seeing William either land on my lap mm-hmm. or scream and yell in the video. 
there's always a, a chance for William to participate in a martini talk oh, or on just, a cooking show, especially because right? when he smells me and Carl oh, yes. and they're cooking, he is just row, row, row through the whole entire episode, and everybody just cracks up and says, oh, my God, William's in another episode. of." He, he's probably looking for food. Do you, do you feed him, or is he just picking up the scent? I don't know. Does well, he get we scraps? feed him, too. Yeah, he, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. why. Especially now, because he went in. I was telling uh, my viewers on the show last week that you know he got diagnosed with hypothyroidism. Okay. And so he now has to have a little bit of a cream in some of his ear to kind of regulate right. that. But he was really vocal and really hungry. Mm-hmm. And he could just, and kind of a little bit confused and disoriented. And he's not young. He's 12. Okay. So it's time to kind of get, I got that nipped in the bud. But if right. I, as long as I've given him his medicine and he's got, his latest little trick is turkey. He wants sandwich meat. Mm-hmm. He doesn't even want cat food anymore. Oh, he, he wants switched to be, off uh, to huh. Yeah. But Brian, the, our vet, said to just give him whatever he wants as long as it's not, like, bad. Like, he was licking right. the butter off of grits one morning, and I called Brian. I'm like, um, is he supposed to be having butter? And he's like, no, he's just hungry. He's, he's, he's trying to let you know he's just really, really hungry, yeah. and he's lost interest in whatever else it is that you had. I'm like, well, he's got, like, a whole buffet. He's like, got everything he wants. And you run rotten. a cooking show, so, you know, it's, it's like so he's, he wants for nothing. <laughs> no, I... And it's funny, we don't give ours food, but if I go and eat something, and a lot of times I'm in a hurry, and it's not healthy to do it that way, but a lot of times I'm eating standing up and on the run. If I'm eating something, they're not asking for my food, but they'll go over to their bowl and start eating too. They get the whole food thing going. Uh-huh. And the one thing we do, do is my daughter eats yogurt in the morning, so she has a little little white cat. It's like a, it's a flame point, and they're very vocal. And this is a female, which is kind of rare. So it's all white, but it has like ears like the, like the, the tabbies, the, the orange. And it likes the yogurt bowl. So if she sits down the little yogurt thing, she'll start talking like while she's eating the yogurt. And then she sits it down and lets her lick the yogurt bowl in the kitchen. That's her thing. But, you know, it's, they hear the sounds as soon as that refrigerator opens and a certain thing, you know, it's uh, open up a can of tuna fish if you have a cat. And then the oh, next yeah. thing you know, they, you, you want your cat, you just hit the, the can opener and make that noise even. And they'll come from wherever. Uh-huh. So, yeah. Uh-huh. Interesting animals, very very intelligent. It's interesting because people that don't have cats don't know that. Like they just yeah. don't get My it. My mom didn't like cats when I was growing up. She had a, I think she they lived in New York for two years, and she said there was a lady they went to visit there, and she had cats, but they had a lot of hair and a lot of shedding. So you know, I was born here. I mean, uh, we got you know they they'd stopped off there for a little while for two years before they moved down to Houston like everybody else, but. You know, I always said, well, you know, can we have a cat? She goes, no, we can't have a cat. She says, then she'd tell the story about the lady in New York, and then she'd talk about cats, and she's like, you should like flower beds. But, you know, in our neighborhood, because we didn't have gardens or anything else, cats were using her flower bed for the litter, litter box. box. Oh, yeah, so I remember that, too. So, you know, and my wife, big cat person, so, you know, I was not exposed to cats until right before we got married. You know, my wife said, okay, you're going to buy a house before we get married. You have to do that. Check. So bought the house. She's still living with her parents. And she goes, and by the way, my mom doesn't let me have my cat in the house, so now you're putting the cat in the house. It's your, until we get married, the cat's now your house cat that came in from the outside. So that was interesting. How old was the cat when you got married? Ah, uh, he was probably a year and a half. Oh, so baby. Maybe still a baby. baby cat. But he had lived, you know, in that in the interim, he had lived across the street in a vacant lot from their house. And then, because the mom, her mom won't let the cat in the house, so... But he'd see my car come to visit, and he'd chase my car down the street, and then he'd bring gifts like we talked about. And But it was a really neat cat because he had that outside cat mentality, and then he was brought in. The cats we have now are more indoor cats, and they're, they're cool. cool. I like them, but it's not like this one. This one used to just randomly bite me, and I sometimes think it was funny, you know. It was a little bit feral, you know. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't going to do any harm, but, you know, just yeah. that little bit of edge to him. But, yes, cats are really cool. Yeah, yeah. I love them. I do. I just do. And I, I think... Brian's like, well, you know, we get, now that James Everett's getting ready to graduate mm-hmm. from high school, he's like, well, and we're not going to have an empty nest, which is wonderful, but right. he is going to stay at home. We talked about that too. But um, it's like, whenever these cats that we have right now are gone, after they've, you know, gone to baby Jesus, then mm-hmm. what? And I'm like, we'll, we'll get another cat. Yes. I don't, I mean, I'm an, art, I'm an artist. I'll always have a cat. It's, it's kind of like, like the... Matisse always having a bird on his shoulder. Yeah. It's, it's part of the lifestyle. It's, it's what it is. I'm a writer. I'm, I'm an artist. It's going to always have to have a cat. So no, I, I, I don't have to have 10. I just need one. And my preference is blonde and boy. Because uh-huh. I've had the best luck with the personalities of blonde and boy. The mm-hmm. girls, they're they're very much uh, finicky. Like mm-hmm. they're, I mean, the, I love them. They're good. Yes. They're great for the garden. They're great for like just having a wonderful cat around. But if you really want a relationship yes. with a cat... You really need a blonde boy because the boys are just, and they pick a person. They pick the one that, that's yeah. theirs, and then that's it. And it's your whole life is with that cat. That cat lives for you. They keep you on a schedule. I mean, it's 7.15 at night. 
It didn't matter when the kids were little and I had clients in there shooting them. If it was 7.15, 7.30, he started screaming for me. Christopher Thomas yep. was, is the cat that was before William. And William was jealous. William would knock the back legs out of Christopher Thomas. And Christopher Thomas lived to be 19. Oh, but wow. He slept with me. He was with me 19 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I was not prepared for I mean, I did not realize what a big emotional situation was going to occur whenever he passed away because right. it was not something that I had prepared for. And mm -hmm. I haven't shared a lot about life with you in terms of personal life, but my viewers know mother got killed. She got hit by a train when I was eight and daddy dropped dead on his 64th birthday. And oh, wow. so she's used to my parents just dropping out of the scene on a, on a no note basis. Yeah. Like one minute you're here, poof, the next minute you're gone. But my cat had been consistently with Part me and life. there wasn't any sort of indication that he was not going to do was he was even sick. And it was like from Christmas to January the 3rd, and it was just like, it would just went downhill. Went into renal failure. I even had him hooked up to an IV. I mean, it was bad. Yeah. And, and I had to call my priest in to do the last rites. Okay. It was it, horrible. And I had to shut the studio down for three weeks. But I got to thinking about it. It was like, you 19 know, years is a long time. He slept with me. I he mean, was with us through two miscarriages. He was with us. He would scream at me when Victorian was screaming wanting to be nursed yeah. when we had the first baby. He did the same thing with, with James Everett with the second. He was just so much a part of my everyday life that when he was gone, I was just a mess. A mess. Now, well, ours lived to be 12, That what I was talking about. My wife was like that, too. In fact, she didn't want any more cats because she was still holding on to that other cat. She said, I don't need any more cats. We don't want any more cats. And I, and I, I probably could have gone either way with it, but I said, well, look. I said, at least see if you want one i guarantee you and then now she has two she has the boy and the girl and to your point the, the we thought the male cat was going to be mine and the female was going to be more hers and my daughter's but the male cat is on her constantly so it's like all about her and the female cat you're right very opinionated so if it's time for my daughter to go to bed at nine at night she's at the stairs making noise it's time to go to bed bossy very yeah. bossy yeah. so it's like I totally understand that, and they're very, they're, they're a part of our lives, and they kind of mark things in our lives, because you look through the photos, and you, you like photos, okay, the, you could kind of judge, okay, the cat was a little here, the, my kid was a little here, it's, you know, they're, they, they give a lot of joy. Yeah, they really do, and there's a lot of pictures of me and William, and that's the other thing I've done with William that I've not, I did not, I didn't think about it with Christopher Thomas, right, mm -hmm. before that was Charlie, you know, so... With William, now I actually take the time. And Bobby Flay, I'm going to give a lot of credit to him because I just adore him. And he and mm -hmm. I are on Instagram together. He's got Nacho and Stella. And, I, and, and, he, and they're both really gorgeous Mancoon, same sort of fur structure. William right. Stray was found in an insulation of a house in Katy that oh, my wow. clients were building. And went to check on their house and found, found the kittens and brought them to me because we've got the land. And they were like, the ETA yeah. will take them. And I'm like, sure. But I was never attached to him until, but he was attached to me. Right. And then Mad, when, you know, and then once Christopher Thomas passed away, he immediately went to the side of the bed where Christopher had been for 19 wow. years. He was waiting in line to get the hierarchy to be able to be, to the be next. with me. Yeah. And, uh, but, but he takes pictures of Nacho and posts them on Instagram. And so part of my living the sweet life oh, okay. and kind of making sure that it's not always an ask, because I'm not asking people to do much of anything, right. really. I'm not selling you. Yeah. If you need photos, you come. If you need vacation, you call. If you want your right. house, whatever. Right? Like, I'm not out selling things to people. And if you do well, you don't have to, really. I no. mean, it's more about having fun. But and, I want to, like, give, like, that. a little world, William's words of wisdom. Right. Something really sweet. Something that's positive and uplifting. Sure. So Wednesdays, typically... If it's not a crazy week, like this week's been a crazy week, yep. I try to do something with William, but that makes sure that I get photos taken of him because mm -hmm. I didn't want to look back like I did with Christopher Thomas, and there was like 10. Mm -hmm. I was so busy shooting the kids, kids I wasn't shooting yes. the cat. And so Bobby Flay, of course, he's shooting the cat. Right, he's using that as part of it because that's what you're, you know, I mean, they're interacting. That's part of the equation. So, I mean, and you have amazing portraits in there. That's great, too. Thank but you. that host candid moments are nice, too, when you have those because you... Kind of go back and you'll remember something from about that time or something mm -hmm. your kids said. You know, I had a, you know, my, my daughter was two, two, maybe around two, I think she was. And we were playing one day in the living room. There's a picture that my wife took shortly thereafter. And, you know, it was college football season and I was really getting into it. So I bought her this little Dallas Cowboys football. I'm not a Cowboys fan or anything. We just went up there for the Cotton Bowl and I brought it back. And she was little and I was throwing it at her, but I was getting like into it. Not really hard. It was a real soft football. And it hit her chest and then she'd go like this like a delayed. And I said, come on, you got to try to catch it. And then this is when she kind of formed her first sentence. She goes, hey, she goes, hey, you're not being very nice to me. 
And I was like so proud because that was her. But, you know, we have that memory because we had the photograph of right before, you know, my wife just happened to take that one. And it's one of those things that you just kind of always remember. So that's the cool thing about whether it's portraits or the candid photographs. So I still tease her about that. So cool. Yeah. That's so cool. Well, I'm excited about the real estate market for Houston. It's a tight market right now. It's a seller's market right now. God knows I've got one listing and there, there's a you know, this cash offer and mm -hmm. no time to hardly to close. And there's just so much good stuff going on. And oh, yeah. people are wanting to move out to the country and they're wanting, there's 600 houses going in across the street. I saw that going in. Yeah. yeah. And these houses out here that have the land and have the big pools and all the gardens and stuff oh, yes. are going to go just nothing but up, 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 and up, And you get up. to keep your trees too, you know. I mean, they'll put trees out there on those, yeah, but, but you have already that. stripped the land down. Yeah. Oh, I saw it. Yeah. yeah. And you know what I thought was different around here is, you know, you... You're down here in the, this really far southern part of Houston, kind of southwest. I'm up in the northeast. I grew up on the southeast. It's very rural here, which is really nice, but it reminds me of where I grew up in League City. We had a few little neighborhoods, and then in the early 80s, South Shore Harbor came in, and then everything just kind of ballooned around that. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't find a gas station when I came out here earlier. So I was like, there's no gas station. It's in near Houston. And Houston, where I live, I mean, that part. Every corner. Every corner. And I said to myself, I said, I wonder what this is going to look like in 10 years. I bet, you know, I, your area here is nice. You're in the back. You guys have that. My parents have a situation like that out in, in Mont Bellevue, but you're going to have the gas stations and all that stuff too. But it's because people want to come here. And, you know, I, I was showing, um, normally I don't represent on the helping people find side, but I had a client that called me from California. Uh, he's from Arizona. They went from California to Arizona, bought a house there, and now he's getting um, stationed here doing recruiting in Houston oh. and they wanted to come see Houston they're moving from Tucson and I was showing them a place yesterday in Katy and you know great area but we could not find hardly anything and they had really good credit they have you know they have the, the fees they're going to use their other one as a rental but to your point right now it's a great market if you're selling a home it's a great market if you're a landlord it's a tough market if you're a renter and it's getting to be a tough market if, if you're, you're a buyer, buyer. Absolutely, because the interest rates are low, and that's great. Um, the inventory's you know, gone. But the inventory's gone. And, it, and it's just, you know, I think we were one of the top markets for new builds last year here in Houston, but you're just, and it's not just Houston, it's, you have to look at the, the materials costs are going up now. You know, I was, I heard an investor thing the other day, they're saying like in California, you know, the entry level homes, the entry level stuff, which is way more expensive than we have, but just due to materials alone are going up to like $20,000 or more just for the wood, the, the gypsum that goes into the sheetrock. So mm -hmm. right now we're also dealing with that too. So, you know, I tell people, you know, I love real estate, but I'm not one of these, you got to do it now kind of guys. I say, take it yeah. back. You know, you've been in this a long time. Yeah. It's cyclical because yeah. I, I have a new family that's moving into a home. I went with them last night and they're moving into the one of the ones we're renting and they were in that situation too. They weren't quite ready to buy. And I could tell I, I, I was meeting with the husband who had, I'd shown the house to and I was meeting the wife and she kind of, you know, I could tell he was on the let's rent some more and she was on the let's buy side. And I'm like, I don't buy or sell houses. So that was real easy for me. I'm like, hey, I'm not an expert here. I'm not going to get in the middle of this argument. But I'm telling you, you know, um, we will see a time when it'll become more affordable. Now, rates may go up, mm -hmm. but if you look at where we're starting you know, I, I know when my parents bought the house I grew up in in the late 70s, I mean, you had double digit interest rates and inflation at the same time. So, you know, if you're at whatever three or whatever we're at now, even if it goes up to four or five, that's not catastrophic over 30 years. No. So, no. you know, don't let people scare you that, oh, it's the interest rates. It's to your point. It's more about availability. Yeah. But I think that will correct itself over time. And to your point out here, we have plenty of places to build here in Houston. So that's the good know. part about Texas. Oh, yeah such a sweet state and I'm still a North Carolinian yeah. I'll always be a Tar Heel from day one till day done but I'm yeah. a Texan too and you have I've seasons up there time. right so, oh we did gorgeous fall yeah. and of course there's the snow mm -hmm. which was interesting you know there's always cold weather in North Carolina and the collards and the Brussels mm -hmm. and the cabbages were just so happy with this mess that we just oh, I had. bet they were they right. were just so happy they were so happy so well, I want to thank you for being Absolutely. here today. Absolutely. I had so a, much fun I had a great with you. time. And, and I look forward to seeing your family too in, sure. in the spring. We'll do some really pretty photos in the garden. I told, that's what I told you. I said, if my wife had met you 10 years ago, we'd be living here practically because we just did all the photos. And if she sees this place, she'll go crazy. And if you have the little, uh, the little piglet thing, my daughter would love that too. But oh, I'm they're sure. bringing him down from the woodlands. And I said, yeah. it's a boy and that's sort of bad. And she goes, 
it won't matter, Auntie A. You can put a choo choo on him and nobody oh, will, it will know not, the difference. Oh, it will not. You won't know the difference. And yes, so as soon as she sees that, she'll want to come down. Yeah, it's be so great. That's, that's great for kids. We'll try too. to coordinate her to be here the day that we're doing the taping so I that will, she can see the little we'll pig. We'll do but, that. So. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, listen, you guys, if you found any value in our conversation, please do us a favor, like and share. Don't forget to ring the bell. And all of Troy's information will be in the episode information below so that you can get a hold of him. If you're looking at doing investments, if you're trying to figure out how to do that, both of us are realtors. Obviously, you're doing the management side of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, depending on how much money Winky Face is involved with it um, and who you know, I could probably be coerced to being involved in it as well, oh, <laughs> even though yeah. I'm the reluctant realtor. Uh, but, you know, I've been doing the real estate investment side of it for a long, long time. And so I know, I know how to do that and I know how to make that income passive. Yes. which is really the best way to go. So passive that my clients that have known me for photography all these years, they forgot. They didn't even that know that we were in that, that business. Too. And they're like, what's Brian doing? What's Uncle Brian doing now? <laughs> I'm like, what we've always been doing. We're doing right. real estate and, and all those sorts of things. So anyway, just do us a favor, like and share. And like I said, don't forget to ring the bell. And we'll see you next week on another Martini Talks. And thank you for being here. <laughs>